Hello everybody and welcome to Frostpunk. This is Robert Rambles here, thank you for joining me today. If you're not familiar with Frostpunk, Frostpunk is a city building, society building, survival game where we are in control of the last survivors of humanity from London. And we are going to control the fate of human society here as we make choices and try to keep our people alive against the endless winter. I've never had a successful playthrough of Frostpunk. I've had a failed playthrough that was pretty interesting. With the expansion coming out in a couple weeks here, I am excited to get a successful playthrough of Frostpunk under my belt and see the whole narrative and get to move into the expansion with everything fresh in my mind. So let's go ahead and we're going to start a new game uh, through the main story. To preserve civilization from the chaos of its own downfall, we have fled to the end of the world. We will have to adapt to survive. Who will we become in the process? We roam the still, cold world. No horizon in sight. The rulers of old, stripped pride and glory. It feels as yesterday we were turning the wheels of progress. Until the frost stopped it all. Suddenly, without a warning. When tides had changed, they changed for all of us, no matter wealth or class. We have lost our world to snow. And with it, our last traces of humanity. We bid farewell to plenty. For those who remained, came the time to adapt. We decided to leave our homes and head north. We roamed for weeks, maybe months, leaving behind all the things we once believed had made us. It was hope that pushed us forward. Slowly, step by step, we knew the cost of our journey, and we paid the price a hundred times. Finally, the time has come to build the last city on Earth. I love the music there during that intro. It really gets you amped up, doesn't it? All right, a new home. We fled from London and crossed the sea to reach the frozen north. On the way, our convoy was hit by a blizzard and scattered. A handful of us managed to reach the site of this generator, only to find it frozen solid and abandoned. Why is no one here? Did any of our people survive the blizzard? Are there any others out there? Whatever we do, we should expect the worst now that the world as we know it has crumbled. We have to survive, guys. Somehow, some way, <laughs> we will get a successful playthrough and we will survive. All right, fight the cold. We need to get the generator working. It provides heat and power to other buildings. Without it, we'll freeze to death. Stockpile some coal and start the generator. And so I've played this before and I've seen a couple playthroughs, but I'll be reading the tutorials a bit uh, just for anybody who's unfamiliar and kind of walking through what we're doing as well. So the first thing that we want to do, uh, we need our basic supplies and coal is going to be at the top of that list. So let's find our coal deposits, which are over here. And right now we have 50 workers and 15 engineers. We can assign them to get coal. That's going to be the most important thing because coal is what is going to power our generator and our generator is what is going to produce the heat necessary to keep our people alive. We are also going to need wood. 
We don't need steel as badly as we need everything else right now. Um, we have another coal pile over here. So we have... Okay, and then let's see, we have wood crates, do we have steel? Let's get a couple engineers for now on the steel wreckage. Like five of them would be good. And then the rest over on these wood crates. And so you can see our resource gains up here, what we have stockpiled. We're also going to need to build homes pretty immediately because we have, everybody is homeless right now. Uh, you can see them carving their way through the snow out to get to their work sites. Pretty great. All right, let us see if we could build some houses here. Tents, thinly insulated shelter. All right, but it's what we have, so that's gonna be our first priority is getting as many tents up as possible. And we want them to be in the inner ring because if we look at our heat gauge here, we have different temperature markings. So in this zone here, uh, this tent is livable. If we're gonna put it out here, once we turn our generator on, we're only gonna have so much heat and that's only gonna reach so far and our buildings have to be livable in order for them to be utilized. Uh, we do need a medical station, however, we don't even have access to it yet. We don't have access to the Book of Laws, that'll be our progression. We can see a breakdown of our daily production, our daily gains of each resource, if we want to track that. And we can go ahead and turn on our generator. Let's read the tutorial here. Oh, this is camera controls. We already got that. We can move with Wazda is how we'll be moving. Resources and workforce. Resource management is crucial to the city's survival. You need coal to power the generator. Wood and steel are necessary for construction and research. Steam cores are a key part of advanced buildings. Raw food is used to prepare food rations in the cookhouse. Later in the game, more resource types may appear. Like how they cover themselves for like future expansion content. All right, so we're doing pretty good right now. Food, the generator hums with reassuring warmth, but we shouldn't take it for granted. If the generator goes down, the city dies. Be mindful of coal reserves. Now, food, there'll be no city if we starve to death. Secure a way to provide raw food and build a cookhouse to prepare meals. All right, so yeah, we have a couple of more priorities now. Uh, we do need a cookhouse and a hunter's hut. The hunter's hut where is going to go up first. I think we could put it back here in the second ring. And then we're also going to need a cookhouse, which we're not going to have the resources for right now. We need 20 wood. And as you, if we hover over this and you look up at the top to the left, you can see that the tree is flashing red. It's telling us what resource we don't have and why we can't complete the structure. So uh, that's good to, to be aware of. We can speed up time a little bit with the arrows up here so if we want to make time move faster now these buildings are not going to be completed till the workday ends and people have some time to work on the tents let's see workers needed there's so much to do and not enough hands to do it a quick way of addressing this problem is to put our children to work this is going to be our first major choice it's going to be a choice we're going to make this in the book of laws and the book of laws is going to be what shapes our civilization like morally, socially, uh, you know, government-wise, what are we focused on? What are we? Who are we as a people? Uh, we are not going to put our children to work at um, with these jobs. Instead, we're going to invest in children at shelters. So children will be safer if they stay in child shelters during the day, and they won't cause any mischief. We'll get access to the child shelter building that we'll have to build. Hope will rise. We'll talk about hope in a minute. Providing all children with a place in the child shelter gives a permanent hope bonus. And the only negative is that we have to build the building, which is not a negative. So we're going to sign this. And if we do this, you'll see that we'll unlock uh, some more laws later on. 
if we went into labor, that would also unlock other things later on. Like we'd be able to get them into all jobs. We're going to go with child shelters. And then on top of that, we're going to have to build the child shelter. People, and you can see your citizens react. Makes sense to me, but they should do some learning as well. Good. It's better to keep the children out of harm's way. So people are generally happy. You can see our hope went up. We have to keep our hope up and we have to keep our discontent low. That's like the basics of the basics. As far as our priorities. We also don't want homeless people. Let's put up the child shelter. Uh, we'll do it back here. That's probably going to take up a lot of our wood. I think we might have enough tents once these are all constructed. They hold, I think, 10 people per tent. And we have 80 people. And you see, we're still on accelerated time here. So there's a little bit of time after they're done working their jobs where they will come back and, and work on constructing buildings. And then they're going to go into a free time period when they don't really do anything productive. If you have some other buildings that we'll see later on, they could do things at those buildings, but... Let's see, the child shelter is ready and the children are safe inside. People can work without worrying that something will happen to their kids. Hope rises. Alright, and then thinking about what else we need, we need a cookhouse. Uh, basically ASAP. Again, wood's going to be the main issue here. Our coal is looking pretty good. It makes me wonder if maybe we ought to ease off on that a little bit. And assign some more workers to some wood crates. Let's get these guys on the wood for the next day. Uh, if we're trying to think about what is our consumption here? Efficiency. We're producing uh, what looks to be 300 a day. This is our consumption versus our what we're gathering. So we're really good. This is a good picture here that tells us exactly what's going on with our coal. We're using up to the white line, but we're producing almost twice again that much. So that, to me, this early, that's not bad. That's kind of what I'd like this to look like going forward. My major issue in previous playthroughs has been just not enough coal to keep us warm. Because as you can see, the temperature right now is negative 20, which seems pretty damn cold, right? Eventually, we're going to get a blizzard. And that's going to make our buildings even less livable. And to prepare for that, we need to stockpile a ton of coal, basically. Uh, let's see, illness and health. The temperature inside a building depends on the power setting of the generator, if the building is in a heat zone. That building's insulation and the conditions outside. There are six temperature levels. We really want to stay comfortable or livable. Keeping homes and workplaces as warm as possible helps prevent people from getting ill. Some workplaces might become inoperative if the temperature falls too low. Uh, we know about controlling time. Construction, we, we learn about construction and we'll talk about roads. The generator, we know about the generator. We, we can turn up different levels. We can also put it into overdrive, which extends how much heat it gives out, but also costs more fuel, uh, more coal. Illness and healthcare. Cold homes or workplaces cause people to get sick. Without proper care, they can become gravely ill and might die. The sick can be treated in medical posts, but the gravely ill need an infirmary to be treated. Till you build one, you can save their lives by signing one of two laws. The radical treatment law allows you to treat the gravely ill in medical posts, but some of them will be left as amputees. The sustained life law allows you to keep the gravely ill alive, but untreated, in medical posts or care houses permanently. So we can do radical treatment, we can cut off frozen limbs, send them on their way, they can't work. Or we can sustain their life, but then we have to kind of house them permanently. We don't treat whatever's going on, we just keep them alive. Probably do radical treatment. That'll later let us get open up prosthetics, which will get them back to work. Uh, and make their lives a lot better. On top of everything else. Alright, let's speed up this time of the day. We still have some homeless people. I'm actually not too happy about that. But we don't have a lot of wood coming in yet. Uh, we know about the day-night cycle, but let's take a look. The city wakes up at about 6. People have some free time until the work shift starts at 8, unless there's construction work to do. After they finish their shifts at 1800, they are free. To help with construction again, which can keep them up well past midnight, 
you can extend the 10 hour work shift if you sign certain laws. And so this is a cool picture breakdown of what times they get. So from midnight to six, they get six hours of sleep. Six to eight, they can have free time to work on buildings. Then they go out to their assigned post. And then they have free time again to work on buildings from six to midnight. So they actually have a lot of free time, but you know, we're actually using most of it to build stuff. So I don't know how fair that is to them, but it's what we have to do. Uh, we also need to assign people to this hunter's hut if we do expect uh, anyone to go hunting for food. And for that, we need some workers. We'll get them going. Basically, everything that we build that is functional is going to have to be staffed by somebody. So eventually, we are going to have to bring more people in, which is going to mean more homes. Uh, so let's see. How many more tents do we need here? Two more? Okay, and after that, we need a cookhouse and then a medical post. Put the cookhouse over here next to the hunter's hut, and then we'll eventually build the medical post over here. Other priorities that we need, we really need um, to get our workshop going. The workshop is going to allow us to get into our technology trees, which has to happen soon. We're basically wasting time. And let's build a street. So we just saw a message that this building was not adjacent to a street and it needs to be. We can click here and we can build some streets. Like so. Um, this is okay. I feel like we just might have too many people on coal. That's going to need to be the first place we pull people from, unfortunately when we need them to make other buildings. What is this? A note of thanks. We just wanted to thank you. Back in London, it was only the wealthy that didn't have to send their kids to work. In this new world you're creating, we can see things will be different. Excellent. So look, our good choices are already paying off. Hunters. Hunters leave the city to hunt in the Frostlands for food. They work from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. Initially, they bring up to 15 units of raw food from each hunt. Research upgrades to significantly increase hunt yield. Okay, so they work from midnight to 6, they go out, or from 6 to 6, they go out in the evening. That's good to know. Alright, let's speed up a little bit here. And try to think about what else we're going to need. We already have two sick people. None of them are gravely ill, and I'm hoping that once we... Once we finish the medical post, uh, which we haven't started yet, we'll be able to get those people taken care of. Let's go ahead and put this medical post up now. And we are going to have to build another road. Let's do it like so. And that should be the basic buildings that we need for right now. So we can leave time going forward. I think I'm going to need to pull some people off of coal and get them on the wood, but... Alright, let's take five from here. And let's try to find some wood crates for them to go on to. Like, back here we could put them. We're slowly building up steel, it's just not that important at the moment. People from our convoy. With basic resources secured for now, we could try to rescue the people we left behind, build a beacon, scout Frostland, and save as many survivors from our expedition as possible. You'll need a workshop to design plans for more advanced buildings. And so we have the workshop right here, and it actually just finished, which is perfect timing. This is our tech tree. Uh, as you can see, we have four different trees to look at in here. Heating. That is obvious, it's going to help us heat our colony more efficiently and in a bigger area. Exploration and industry, now we just learned we need to create a, a beacon to have some scouts. That's going to be the first thing we do. Resources, we're going to have to get into pretty fast to get a sawmill going. We're also going to need a coal thumper and then a coal mine because the stuff at the surface is going to eventually run out. Uh, food and shelter, we can get hunter's gear, we can then get into hothouses and upgraded medical posts, as well as upgraded living. The upgraded houses are going to have more insulation and provide better protection from cold when we have those blizzards that are going to come through. 
For now, let's grab the beacon. And we need to employ some engineers. Uh, and to do that, we'll have to pull them off. Where are they? There are some of them on these wood crates. Not really where I want to pull them from. But I'm going to have to. Let's put them all on that. Then we have to go back in here. There we go. Alright, so they're going to start researching that. However, we took some people off of wood. And I don't know how that's going to go. And it may result in us pulling more of them off of coal. Let's just get them all off of this one coal pile. How do we have five engineers available? Maybe, oh, we pulled them all off. All right, well for now, that's a, that's a coal deposit. I guess for now they can go back on these wood crates. Or actually, um, no, they can't go back on those wood crates. Uh, they actually, we actually need them and we need them in the medical huts. Child shelter, there's our medical post. Five engineers, get to work guys, become good doctors and help heal these four people before anybody is gravely ill. Food and hunger, the cookhouse prepares meals for people, it produces two food rations from one unit of raw food. We know that raw food is coming from hunters and hothouses. It is sometimes found by scouting during their explorations. All right, self-explanatory research. We just looked at research. All right. Let's go ahead and speed things up here. This is their free time, but we don't really have anything being built. That's probably a mistake. We should probably be using this time to put up some more tents because eventually we're going to have more citizens. Oh, that was the start of the work shift. Okay. Uh, we can't do anything else in the Book of Laws, or can we? Oh, we can. Alright, we need to be on this because we need to always be working on getting a new law signed. It's kind of like on a cooldown that we have to be using. So we can make our children now, they can study to become medic apprentices. Education is the key to our future. Let's teach our children medicine so they can help with the sick. Or engineering apprentices. Education is the key to our future. Let's teach our children engineering so they can help with new designs. Sick people are going to be a real issue. I think we're going to train them to become nurses, doctors, or whatever. This would be great. It would be great to speed up research, but I want people to stay alive. Listen, everyone. They're going to learn medicine. Good, let the kids learn. We need more skilled medics. Well, it's surely better than letting them bum about all day. And so everyone's generally happy. We're, putting, we're giving the kids an education, and we're putting them to work. As opposed to just having them go out and pick up boxes all day or coal. You know, people get pissed about that. Uh, but now they're happy. Family torn apart. Sir, a woman came forward after we built the workshop. She said that her husband and daughter didn't reach the city with the main group, but she's sure they're still out there. She wants to join the first scout team we'll send out. She urges you to hurry. Uh, we'll do what we can. Did we finish? No, we didn't finish the beacon yet. We're still researching it. As soon as it's researched, we will... Uh, we will build the beacon and we will get some scouts going. Okay, people are hungry. They're not starving. But that might be an indicator that potentially we could get another hunter's shack going. Because, uh, you know, we have an okay stockpile of food though. They're just, it hasn't been cooked yet. And I wonder, we need workers in the cookhouse, right? That's probably what's happening. Yeah, there's nobody in here. And for some reason we have workers available, and I need to keep an eye on that. Uh, let's get them going. Let's get some of them on steel. Some of them on wood. And the others on coal. 
Beacon research is complete. We can go ahead and put the beacon up. I think the beacon can be out in the farther tiers. Obviously, we need to build a road to it. Uh, but we can definitely do that. And now we can look at what we need to do next. We could do more scouts. Steam hubs. When powered by the generator, these contraptions create additional smaller heat zones around them. Each active steam hub consumes three coal per hour. Or heaters allows us to use heaters to heat workplaces during working hours. Each heater raises a workplace's temperature. We don't have a lot of workplaces yet, except in the inner rings where they're relatively safe. I wonder if we go with steam hubs. I think I'm going to. This will allow us to build basically mini generators that have their own their own heating zones. So we can build structures further out, like more building more houses and whatnot when we need to. Okay. And book of laws, that's still a one day, three hour cooldown, so we don't need to do anything there. And I am thinking that maybe we will build another uh, hunter's hut. That's what I'm thinking. And then we can grab some of the people that we put onto coal and just put them, get them hunting for more food. I don't, I don't like how low our food gets, honestly. I like watching the people move um, throughout the town. It actually looks busy and bustling and they do a really good job of kind of making it feel actually alive. Beacon built. We're no longer lost and blind. From now on, our people will be able to survey the icy barrens that surround us, the Frostland. Excellent. Well, there she goes, our beacon. A hot air balloon, which makes perfect sense to me. That's actually a really cool way to think about like scouting long distances is just to send up a tethered hot air balloon. You can go up as high as you want and you don't need like to climb a peak or anything. Really, really cool. Like kind of a lower tech way to do scouting. All right, now we can send scouts out. We can shoot them right over to the lost expedition, send scouts. So first we need to make people into scouts, right? And to do that, um, we're going to have to staff the beacon, I think. Not enough wood, so they might they must need some supplies. We need 40 wood and 5 workers. So we have the workers. We're literally just waiting on the wood at this point. Let's, let's get into the work day. We're in free time right now. Ready to search. People cheer as the giant observation balloon soars above the city. This is a real feat. Everyone feels proud of the work they've done to make it happen. Volunteers have lined up, eager to go looking for our lost people in Frostland. The woman who came forward earlier is among them. We needed a win. Ah, uh, we did. We're doing okay though, actually. Hope is at an all-time high. Discontent is non-existent. We're gonna have one person to staff here after we make our scouts. Um, and let's just get into it. Let's get through free time here when you zoom out it automatically resumes normal play speed which I appreciate all right we've gotten back to the morning they should start going out any minute I've got to hold on people are depending on me we survived another night. That has to count for something. It does. We're doing well, guys. We're doing well. Everyone should feel good. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, and we have hit a blizzard. We are at negative 40. If we go ahead and turn on our heat map, uh, we'll see that everything is chilly. This is when people start to get sick. And we can't just overheat the generator permanently. We can start a little bit. We can overdrive it. 
And that'll make this area livable, which is going to cut down on the amount of sick. However, we're not going to be able to keep it in overdrive until the blizzard lifts, I don't think. We're going to have to watch this and turn it off. If it gets too high, uh, the generator will literally explode. And that's a big game over. So we don't want that to happen. We only have 28 wood. And I'm just like, really, we just need wood. Let's put them on here for now. We can always pull them off. They probably won't even get out there to help, honestly. Uh, they must have exhausted that supply because we have a bunch of them available again. Let's send some over here. That leaves seven available. We are going to need five of them for our scouts. Now that we have scouts, uh, we can we can head out to the Lost Expedition. Numerous tents. We can see people moving about. They must be lost members of our expedition. Okay. And so I guess we're on the way there. 10 hours and 48 minutes. The wood, pl cr the wood crates were depleted. That's how we ended up with all those extra people. Uh, we still have two available for now. Let's get them onto coal. Or actually, let's get them into our second hunter shack, shall we? That'll start bringing in some more food because that's also a concern. Now we still have a while to go here. And this is creeping up and up. I'm kind of hoping this finishes in time for us to use these heat hubs. I'm just really worried that um, people are going to get really sick. And I'm thinking like, do we just need another medical post to deal with this? Is that going to be the best thing for us to do? And do we have the engineers? We certainly don't have the wood. That's been a huge issue. And we depleted one of our stores, so realistically I should be looking for other wood crates. That's steel wreckage. Wood crates. Here's some wood crates right here. I wonder if I just need to take these guys out of here for now. Put them on wood crates. We can grab... Who else is on coal? We have... Let's check our coal. Ooh. Ooh. And see, we're using a lot more right now because we are in overdrive. That's not going to last forever, but I don't really feel comfortable taking people off that right now. Frostbite. One of our people has become gravely ill due to frostbite. This will keep happening if people have to work in such cold. Alright, here we go. We can sustain life, we can do radical treatment. We can't do it yet though, so we have six days till we can sign a new law. We'll see what happens. We have a little bit of discontent creeping up because it's cold at work, guys. All these buildings out here are chilly. They have a low risk of getting ill, but... Uh, the, the medical tent, however, unfortunately is cold. Its insulation is clearly not as good as the child shelter or the other buildings. That's like the worst place for me that to be cold, you know what I mean? That's the place you want it to be warm. We probably should have built one in the inner ring. That was probably a mistake that we, we might pay for that. We might pay for that in short order. Alright, let's get time moving a little bit here. We know the number of ill is simply going to keep creeping up until we figure out a solve for it. Our generator is <laughs> definitely not going to make it until the end here. So we're going to turn that off overdrive. And we're just going to have to deal with the fallout from our people and the illnesses that result. Happy reunion. We enter the camp, appearing out of the driving snow. A choir of excited voices welcomes us. Thank God you found us. We have been wandering for days until we couldn't go on any longer. Soon we begin to starve. Children and adults surround us, packed and ready to go. Sight discovered gloomy cave, sturdy shelter. 
Escort survivors to the city or send them on their own. Some of them may die. Let's just get them back and take what we have with us. I'll be back in five hours. In the meantime, the medical posts actually become inoperative when we don't have this overclocked. This is going to get dicey, guys. I feel like we're going to lose some people. And that the next law we need is actually going to be to create a graveyard. That's a little sad. Uh, but ultimately it is what it is. Oh, we need new research. We need to be paying attention to that. We could have done heaters in workplaces, honestly. Uh, we're not going to do that now. Generator power upgrade. 50 wood just to get into that tier. We, we have to save for it. Uh, to me, the generator power upgrade is like the most important things. Like the range probably first, maybe. Range and then power. I think we need them both as soon as possible. Um, and I don't think we're going to be doing too well until we get them. So I think that's going to be what we save for. I really want to make sure we don't have... Yeah, we have a bunch of available people. Just like absolutely doing dick. Um, you need to be on wood crates like to the max. Except maybe two of you need to go back on coal. If we have any like free deposits anymore. Here we go. And then we're going to have to work on our sawmills so we can exploit the trees and our coal thumper so we can get more coal. Because we're going to run out of these resources that are simply scattered around the map. We're going to run out of those easily accessible resources pretty soon. This generator is going to explode, guys. We're really worried about it. But we're going to keep our medical huts going as long as we can because we need these people to be treated. Yeah, see, we have the gravely ill still. They need treatment. Uh, can we get in here yet? Yeah, we can do this. We can do this. Radical treatment. Here we go. Discontent is going to rise slightly. Hope went up. Discontent went up. Uh, because we have bad health care. People are not happy with the health care and they're not happy with being cold. We have a controversial law when we decided to, that we could amputate people, I guess. Even with all our advances in medicine, we have to resort to this. So obviously some people are not happy with it. Those are things that we're just going to have to deal with. And we're going to make the best decisions that we can. Now we're going to have a bunch of homeless people. The good news is their arrival is going to basically coincide with the end of the frost wave. Scout unit number one have returned safely to the city. They brought some children. And a bunch of mouths to feed, guys. And they came during a blizzard. Like, what timing? People from our convoy. Reunions. It's heartwarming to see families reunited after so many hardships. But shouldn't there be other settlements nearby? The first expeditions left London long ago. They ought to be well established by now. They'll surely help us find our footing. Well, we will look for others. Alright, scouts. Uh, where do we want to go? Gloomy cave? Sturdy shelter? Observatory? Uh, the sturdy shelter seems like a likely place to find useful things. A bulky cylindrical construction stands on a small hill. The Union Jack flies over it, but there's no sign of movement. The Union Jack. The flag? Alright. Fair enough. Alright, let's see what's going on here. Our generator is still dangerously close to exploding on us. Um... Search for others. Our people found a trail leading into the wilderness. We should follow it. We must find other people and ask them for help to secure our survival. Yeah, we've already got the scouts sent out. We're doing it. We're doing it live. Time to earn your bread. That's right. Alright, what do we need to do? We need houses. We have lots of homeless people. However, we have other problems. Mainly that we're going to have a crap ton of sick people really freaking soon. Alright, that should be enough for our homeless people. Let's go ahead and get the roads out here. There we go. Building streets. So many sick people. 
that can't be treated right now, but what are you going to do? And we should have workers though, that's the great thing. Uh, let's start getting some more steel. Kind of been putting that off. We have 24 workers. It's pretty amazing. Uh, medical posts we need engineers for, but we can shove some of these people into the hunter's hut. There we go, and that should get our food going. Let's turn this sucker back on for a little bit. Ooh, one of our people died. That's our first loss. First death. One of our people has just died. Sickness, accidents, and the deadly cold will keep claiming lives in this harsh world. We need a way to dispose of the bodies. Yeah, we do, but we have eight hours till we can sign the new law. Uh, we'll, we'll need a cemetery, I think. If we're going to be letting people die, the least we can do is give them a cemetery. Where do we have engineers at? We have too many engineers out on the steel when we need them at specific places. Okay, and then the rest of them can go back uh, to the steel, or to wood, if we have any more wood laying around, we can just exploit the rest of that, because pretty soon we're going to need a sawmill, and if I were paying attention here, we're pretty close to being able to unlock this, we still need a little bit more wood that hopefully we'll have soon, let's just get there, shall we, because in the meantime this is just sitting idle. But we do need to save for certain technologies. I'm not even going to look at that till I unlock this. More sick beds needed. Uh, we will open a new medical post. We'll promise that they'll be treated. They'll be treated because our temperature is going to go back to normal here pretty soon. I think. We got people who are hungry as hell. Uh, which tells me that we probably need a new cookhouse. Unfortunately, we can't build anything right now because we just used the last reserves of our wood. What we didn't run out of or have a problem with was coal. However, that's two dead people. We didn't have a problem with coal, but we are losing people left and right. Uh, they're hungry, they're sick, they're gravely ill. A lot of bad stuff's going on with them right now. But we're going to warm back up here in a minute. That's going to help out a lot. Uh, the wisdom of the crowd. Captain, when facing demands, remember this. People usually look for the quickest solution, not the best one. You don't have to agree with everything they ask for. If you fix the problem your way, it's fine. Okay, thank you for that. Makes me feel just as incompetent as I felt before, but, uh, you know, thanks for the understanding. What is this? Oh, is this still being worked on? Okay. The scouts are almost at their destination. And I think the temperature is about to go back up. Scouts have found this dirty shelter. Alright, let's check them out. The shelter is well supplied and built to withstand even the worst weather. An advanced steam heating system that protects it from the cold. Food rations, wood, and steam cores. The trail leads to another city. The shelter is comfortable and well equipped with emergency supplies. There's a notice posted by the heavy round door. To all scientists, if you use any supplies, remember to notify the quartermaster upon your return to the city. This means there's another city out there. A signpost by the trail points in two directions. London, 1,934 miles. Home, 27 miles. We discovered the steel bridge. We're going to take these resources, though, shamelessly. We need the food. We need the wood. Oh my god, so much wood. So much wood. Okay, let's take the wood. Um, and we need to get these guys home. With the wood. Because we need it. Okay, look at that. Temperature. Uh, going back up. 
the reactor is cooling down. Research was stopped because we're in free time. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, what do we need? We don't have any homeless people. We need a food, but we need wood. So much wood. Let's get some wood cons wood up and then <laughs> let's get some wood up. That was the right wording. And then I think we just need another... It's like we need another medical post, but we're like just going to be burning through engineers, right? Let's check out how many people we have staffed. Are we fully staffed on engineers in both of these? We are. It's not showing where we have engineers out in the world. Uh, though we do have two engineers available. I, I think we're just going to have to build another another yeah, let's build another medical post. We're just going to have to do it. We also need to get our, our workers here that aren't doing anything, like, on something ASAP. It, I don't know if it needs to be steel. It doesn't need to be wood now. Uh, so maybe it can be steel. Let's just go for that so they're not sitting idle. Well, that's not going to matter today, apparently. Alright, the number of cooked food is going up, the number of hungry people is going down. Let's go ahead and staff this with our two engineers. This will show us where... All, I don't want any of our engineers out in the field. Okay, yeah, see, back here. This is not going to work. Let's grab three of these guys. And let's put them in this other medical tent. And let's just get these people healed. Alright, we can upgrade the range. I want to do this before the next big storm. Allows us to turn the generator range setting and extend its heat zone. The coal used by the generator is doubled. It's better than worrying about always overheating our generator. The power upgrade allows us to raise the temperature in all heat zones by one level. So we need this followed immediately by this. This will make the range bigger. This will produce more heat in each zone when we turn this on. Let's let's do this first. That feels good. That feels really good. We're going to go up and we're just going to have a bigger range. We'll get steam level 2. Uh, and so, knowing that, we do need to make sure that we are focusing enough on on coal. And so, let's take a look around. We still have some active coal deposits at the surface. And if we look at our coal gain, um, well, right now we're not doing so good. So we might need to resolve that, like taking these people from here, like some of them. And putting them here. I think that's going to be better. First amputation. To save this patient's life, we had to perform an amputation. As a result, this person won't be able to work. Okay, we can consign the care, sign the care house or prosthetics law. Hmm, I wonder if this leads to prosthetics. Because I do want to get down into prost prosthetics. Or we just like put them in a bed and leave them there. Alright. So many things that we need to do. I need to get a cemetery first, honestly. We we just we've had a couple people die and that's gonna raise discontent if we don't have a way. Oh, they came back. And they dropped off that stuff. We never sent them back out. Alright, let's go to the gloomy cave just because it's nearby. And see how that goes. Does this... This is not operative because there's no street? Is that what's going on here? It looks like it. Uh, we still have a crap ton of sick people, so yeah, I'm just thinking this is not operating right now because we didn't build a road out to it. That was a pretty stupid oversight of mine. 
And now I'm thinking about, you know, what else do we need? I think we're doing okay. Let's speed things up a little bit. Not really seeing the coal go up as much as I would like it to. It seems to be kind of flat. A frightened patient. One of our people is facing death, but he's still refusing amputation. He keeps screaming that he doesn't want anyone to touch his leg and he won't change his mind, even though gangrene will kill him in a matter of hours. Um, I'm going to pull Rick Grimes here and I'm going to chop this guy's leg off without his consent. And we're going to save his life because we are going to build prosthetics eventually. See, we have five amputees down here. Fifteen people are being treated. Okay. Well, our number of sick is going down, and that's because we got this working. Let's get the rest of our engineers in here. That leaves one engineer just kind of floating out there somewhere. I don't care for that. Let's get him over here. Let's get them on this coal. I need to be watching the alerts because it's telling us when resources are running out and leaving workers idle, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, we know how to do that. Weather changes we learned about. The beacon is old. I don't know why sometimes it shows us like old tutorials that we don't need. We know about I'll just close that out. And if anything new comes up, I'll just explain it as we get to it. Uh, things that I want to do. Looking at food, you know, we could... We could build a cookhouse. That would be another way, but we have so many hunters that that seems fine right now. A gathering post probably would have been more useful early on, honestly. We have steam hubs that just need a lot of steel. Hey, the generator upgrade is researched. And so if we check out our temperature now, look at that. Livable, all the way out to the second ring when we're not in a blizzard. We do have the next blizzard coming up in a few days. So that's something to keep in mind. I wonder if we could get the power upgrade. Let's at least start it. Unburied corpse. See, this is why we're doing the cemetery. A few of our people have fallen ill after coming into contact with a decomposing body. This will keep happening if we have no way to dispose of the dead. I see. I wonder if we just say I see because we're currently working on that. That would be smart of it. Still a lot of people sick. I'm thinking that now that we've increased the heat zone, these tents that are on this outer ring, they won't be getting as, as cold out there. And hopefully that will stop everyone from getting sick as often pretty hopeful. Everything else looks good. We're going to start needing steel soon. And it's kind of the one thing that we've been neglecting. Uh, but it'll start to become important pretty soon here. Food, everything else looks good. Uh, I actually think that this free time here is a good spot to take a little bit of a break. And when we come back, we'll probably have our scouts do some more uh, searching in the gloomy cave. And we're going to we're gonna focus next, I think, on building a coal thumper or sawmills to make sure that we can continue gathering resources after these surface places are are diminished because right now I don't think we have any more wood available we don't we have some steel and we have coal we need to be getting wood now from sawmills so as soon as we learn this next technology for the for the power we're going to research sawmills and get into that all right let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments below. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts on the game. It's a game that I love, that I've loved for a long time, that I've just, I've never had a successful playthrough, but, you know, it's a lot of fun. This is probably the best playthrough that I've had going so far, so I'm excited to see this to its conclusion. I hope you guys are too. As always, thanks so much for joining me today. Take care, wish me luck, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.